Good day class! I hope you are tuning in right now in our FB group. For today's discussion, we will be talking about leadership. Do you have what it takes to be a leader? Let's find out. I'm going to share to you a short video, so please do watch this. Okay, so you've seen the video class about what it takes to be a leader. So maybe you have a, an idea of what is being a leader means. But then, of course, we will still be uh, talking about this. What are the specific characteristics of being a good leader? Okay, how it is important, especially in an organization. So all of that class ay mapapag-usapan natin. Um, this is just the part one of our video because we have already, we have a part of this. It's all about naman group dynamics and team building. But now, let us focus first about leadership. Okay? So, first is here is we have here the objectives of our discussion. Of course, we will describe what is leadership on the, the natural qualities and behaviors of a potential to be a leader and of course we need to really assess and improve our leadership styles build unity to achieve one mission and vision as a team so lahat ng taklas ay mapagdadaanan natin at madidiscuss natin so let's start it okay so I'm gonna share to you a quote sabi dyan, a leader is one who knows the way goes the way and shows the way by John A. C. Maxwell. So, um, it is clearly said that being a leader is just hindi lang siya nagilit, but rather the one who would really show you the way and how would that way, okay? Paano ba siya? Paano mo gagawin? Hindi lang basta basta maguutos lang sa yon, something like that. So. Ayan. So, at least now, nagkakaroon na kayo talaga ng big ideas about what is being a leader. Okay. Then, I shared you a video. So, it was really inspiring. It motivates us to really know what are the capacity and what it really takes to become a leader. Now, let us uh, define leader. Okay, what is a leader or who is a leader? So, sabi dyan, it is a person who influences a group of people towards the achievement of a goal. So, as a leader, you should really have this kind of goal. Okay? And hindi lang yun yung goal mo, but rather the goal of the whole team. 
okay, you should really influence them to achieve that certain goal. Okay. Then, we have here, class, the three P's. Okay, the mnemonic for leadership. First is that we have person. Okay, let's say ikaw yon, you're the leader. And you should learn how to really influence. Like, kanina, ang definition natin ng leader is someone who influences the people. So, you have, you should have a direct influence, no, sa tao. Let them engage to what you are really trying to achieve. And that those people class should really achieve the purpose. Both of you should learn how to achieve this purpose. Usually, this purpose, ito yung mga ating mga um, visions and mission. Doon sa certain task na ginagawa natin. Okay? So, tandaan lamang yan yung 3P, person, people, and purpose. Okay, so, ano nga ba ang pagiging leader? Sabi dyan, a leader by it meaning, by its meaning is the one who go first and lead by example so that others are motivated to follow him. Yun lang ba yun? Yun lang ba ang pagiging leader? I think it's more than that. Okay, that's why may nakalagay dyan, no. Okay, so sabi dyan, to be a leader is a person who must have a deep-rooted commitment to a goal that will strive to achieve it even if nobody follows him. Meaning, even though alam mo sa sarili mo that your teammates didn't want to follow you, but still you are focused on the task and you have that kind of um, really passion to do the task. So that is why yun yung isang magandang attitude ng totoong leader. That despite na again sa kanya yung mga kanyang mga fellow subordinates, but nakikita niya na ito yung ikabubuti ng lahat. So, he will do it and lead and go for it. Okay? So, importante nga, sabi nga dun sa three piece of being a leader is the purpose. Okay? A requirement for uh, for leadership is personal vision. Okay? Dapat ang isang leader, one must have a vision to a certain thing. Okay? Kailangan na visualize niya ano yung mga prospects, ano yung mga possible outcome na pwedeng mangyari if they do this, if they did not do this, something like that. Kailangan visionary ang isang leader. Okay? Hindi lang basta-basta para lang masabi natin to achieve one's task, but rather we wanted to develop not just ourselves, but our teammates and the whole thing na ginagawa nyo. Kailangan talagang visionary. Okay, sabi nga ni Theodore M. M has birch that the very essence of leadership is that you should have a vision. Kailangan may vision ka lagi. You should have this. So this is what we call the purpose. Bakit mo siya ginagawa? One day, I know most of you will become a manager, will will be in a, uh, tawag dyan, different industries. So, importante that we have this kind of ability. We have this leadership uh, uh, skill na kung saan magiging visionary tayo ano pa yung pwedeng gawin ng company ano pa yung kaya kong ibigay for the company what are the things that I could help them more okay to achieve a greater purpose so dapat maging ganun ang isang leader and ayan um, leader has to be practical and realist yet must talk the language of a visionary and idealist Okay, being a leader, it's just a balance of being a realistic and idealistic. Realistic, um, you know what to do on that certain situation. What are the things that to be achieved? And idealistic naman, in a way na you perceive a better outcome for this. Okay, so mahalaga po na meron tayong mga ganong klaseng qualities. Okay? Then, of course, sabi ko nga, it is not just about the purpose, but also it's more on influencing people. Being a leader should really be a great influencer, especially in a positive way. Okay, so sabi dyan, um, one must have a followers. It's really hard to lead when someone wala kang follower. Importante that you really have a follower. No? And as a leader, you have to win their trust. Okay? You have to know your people. Okay? Kailangan kilala mo yung tao mo. Kailangan you know the skills of your subordinates. What they can give to you. What you can um, expect from them. 
So that is why, in order to have this kind of connection with your subordinates, it's really uh, important that you build your trust to your um, subordinates. And dapat worthy ka to gain their trust. Kaya manggagaling talaga sa iyo eh. You know what, sabi nga, um, being a leader is not a position, but being a leader, it is a decision. Okay, it is a choice to lead. It is a choice to be a leader. Choice mo ba na manguna? Choice mo ba na maging good example? Okay, so those things, it's really a choice to be a good leader. Okay? Now, um, let us define what is leadership. Okay? Bakit importante ito kapag may leader? Okay? So, yun. Okay, so moving forward, again, we are here in leadership. Okay, so let us define now what is leadership. So it is really a process by which a person influences others to accomplish an objective and directs the organization in a way that makes it more cohesive and coherent. So like what I've said earlier, you should be a great influencer. Being a leader should be a great influencer because it will illuminate the sa sa nasasakupan natin, no? Makikita nila yon. Mararamdaman ng inyong mga subordinates if you are really a good leader kapag naapektuhan sila sa ginagawa mo. Kapag natatouch mo sila. Not just um, as a workmate, but as a person, no? So, mahalaga yon. And of course, cohesive and coherent. Whatever you say to them, dapat ginagawa mo din. Hindi pwede nag-implement ka ng isang rules and then ikaw exempted ka doon sa isang rule na yun. No, it's because you're a manager, something like that. It shouldn't be. Kailangan makita sa'yo first yung behavior mo doon sa sinasabi mo. Okay? You should be true to yourself. What you say, you should mean it. Okay? Sometimes yun yung problema ng mga leaders kasi they tend to really, okay, do that, do this, and everything. Pero nakakalimutan nila that they, since they are the leader, they should be the one doing it first. So, we should have um, to be more cohesive and coherent on what we are trying to say, what we are trying to convey to them. No, Importante, importante na um, we really mean each words na sinasabi natin. Okay? Karamihan kasi ngayon, they just wanted to implement certain rules and then yung rules na yon exempted sila doon. Like, for example, your goal is to allow your um, subordinates na pumasok talaga ng maaga. Maging aware sila sa work nila para hindi masayang yung entire day nila working. So, if that is your goal na malesen, para at least malesen din yung deduction sa kanilang salary, no? So, kailangan magsimula sa sa'yo talaga yon Pumasok ka rin ng maaga so that may hihiya sila. Magkakaroon sila ng initiative. Oh, ang boss ko sobrang aga pumasok. And then she, he or she is doing his job well talaga. So, uh, ikaw mismo, if you try to be the good example to them, I think makikita at makikita yun ang subordinates mo. So, importante yun that your leadership, the way you lead them, the process and making them achieving the uh, the vision and mission that you wanted to achieve. So, kasama yun dun sa leadership. Okay? Sabi nga ni uh, Peter uh, Drucker, sabi niya, leadership is shifting of own vision to higher sites. The raising of man's perform performance to higher standards and building of man's personality beyond its normal limitations. So, dito class, makikita natin uh, the deeper meaning of leadership is that if you have the vision, sometimes you will learn how to set aside those kind of vision. Okay? Lalo na kung sa tingin mo, medyo malayo siya doon sa kailangan imit ng, ng team. Okay? Or, at some point naman, pwede rin naman, yung vision mo, it should be higher side. It should be in a higher kind of standard. Okay? Na you will achieve not just good, but best. Okay, so you want to raise the performance. Okay, raising the, um, parang you will level up yourself. That is being a leader. You, hindi ka lang uh, basta-basta may hawak ang tao. But you will level up yourself into something na sa tingin mo, it would be the 
beneficial for everyone and for the goal that you wanted to do. Okay, so that is why minsan set aside natin yung mga sariling agendas natin kasi ipaprioritize mo na ngayon kung ano yung sa tingin mong dapat. If you are a manager and kailangan talaga, no, you learn to really manage your people. You're not just raising the standards. You allow them to be the future manager. Don't, kasi may mga ibang tao na, okay, I will train you. Ito train ka lang. Pero yung vision nila, hindi ka para maging manager din. No? Dapat, a, a leader is someone talaga na tutulungan niya yung kanyang subordinates to really uh, level up their own selves also. Okay? So, man's personality beyond the normal limitations. You allow your subordinates to really explore, expose them in certain things, and allow them to really... Um, achieve higher than the usual thing. Kung sa tingin mo itong taong to, nakikitaan mo ng potentials to become a great leader. So, dapat, you are trying to train them not to be a follower all along the way. You are training them to be at some point a leader. Okay? So, dapat ganun yung maging vision natin. We should help one another to really level up their performance to sabi nga sa humanistic approach to really reach the fullest potential of someone. So, as a leader, dapat yun din yung goal mo. Hindi ka dapat, um, tawag dyan, your knowledge ay sa'yo lang. Kailangan na siya share mo siya sa kapwa mo. Okay, don't be selfish on sharing. Ah, kasi baka mamaya maging kaagaw ko po, tapos sa position, something like that. So, hindi siya good leader. Sabi ko nga, being a leader, is, it is not all about the position, no? But being a leader, it's really a decision. You choose to influence someone, and you choose to help him achieve your, uh, the goal that you wanted to achieve. Okay? So, there are factors class in leadership. Okay? So, First is, let us talk about a leader. Kailangan, syempre, sa isang organization, if there are, kaya nga may meron tayo, may mga boss tayo dyan, kasi, si, syempre, sila yung nag-lead sa atin. Sila yung um, nag-guide sa atin what to do. Okay? So, leader, you must have an honest understanding of who you are and what you know and what you can do. So, as a leader, you have, you know your potentials, you know your strengths and weaknesses, and you should learn how to really manage those things. Okay? Kailangan kilala mo talaga ang sarili mo. Kaya nga, class, may iba, before silang ma-promote is that sometimes they undergo the process of interview. Can you handle this? Or at some point is um, a test, no? That could really um, pasok doon sa isang quality of being a leader. Okay? So, sabi dyan, to be successful, you have to convince your follower, not yourself, or your superior, that you are worthy of being followed. So, kung meron kang tao, okay, under sa'yo, okay, the best thing is to really, sabi nga kanina, is that you should learn to get their trust. Ang una mong kailangan makuhang trust ay, of course, hindi ka naman bibigyan ng isang task ng higher sa'yo kung hindi ka niya nakitaan ng potentials. So, since nakitaan ka na niya ng potential, and meron kang mga taong under sa'yo, importante yung mga taong under sa'yo. Hindi lang yung boss mo yung kailangan mo i-praise. But most importantly, is yung mga taong tutulong sa'yo to achieve the goal. And that is your subordinate. So, importante yun. Kaya, kailangan talagang pinangangalagaan natin yung ating mga employees. Kaya nga, diba, hindi... Minsan, nabibigay tayo ng mga rewards as employees of the year. So, those things, class, are strategy to really, you know, gain their trust and at some point, not just gain their trust, but to, but to boost their selves, not to really do more, okay, for the company and for the goal that you wanted to achieve. And, syempre, kailangan ng followers doon. Okay, different people requires different styles of leadership. The fundamental starting point is having a good understanding of human nature, such as needs, emotions, and motivations. Have, be, know, and do attributes. So, kailangan. As a follower, of course, um, you have to know na that there is a need. Kaya nga may follower eh. So, kailangan alam mo yung needs para doon sa task na yun. Ano yung mga kailangan yung gawin? 
hindi maiwasan that there could be a conflict. So, you should also learn how to manage emotional and be motivated in doing that task. Kasi, not all the time mag-work yung strategies na ginawa ng team. Okay? But, from time to time, dapat you learn how to encourage each other. Okay? So, that is why, class, this is a professional development. I am teaching you right now to be... Um, not just to become a listener, but really, I want to engage you how to be a leader talaga. Okay, kailangan meron tayong initiative sa sarili natin na ayoko maging empleyado lang for so long. Kailangan, I should lead, I should do something more. Okay, I should be better. Yun dapat lagi yung achievement natin sa ating mga sarili. Okay, so yun. And, syempre, sabi ko nga sa inyo, the effective way to really lead is to have a good communication. Napag-aralan natin, class, sa ating mga past lessons about communication, yung mga barriers of communication. So, ngayon, it's time to apply. Lalo na kapag nasa workplace na kayo. Communicating well with your fellow um, workmates or with your subordinates is really important. It is a two-way. Okay? Hindi lang pwedeng ikaw at ikaw lang. Okay? Kailangan may makukuha ka rin feedback. Like, for example, um, one of your tasks is to really advertise this. Not just advertise this, but to really be the best advertisement. Kasi marami kayong kalaban. So, kailangan makakuha kayo ng feedback, not just from your subordinates, but also to the customers. So, importante-importante yon. Okay? Kailangan mabil mo talaga yung communication mo first sa mga subordinates mo. It could be verbal or non-verbal. Lalo na yung verbal. Okay? So, sa simpleng tap mo lang sa iyong um, kasama sa, sa team, malaking bagay na yun. Lalo na kung sometimes it feels like frustration yung nangyayari, hindi nagiging effective the strategy. So, kailangan mong uh, i-motivate them. Okay, show them that you really care for them. Okay? And, syempre, situations. All situations are different. What do you, what you do in one situation will always work in another. You must use your judgment to decide the best course of actions and a leadership style needed for each situation. There are times that kailangan manggaling sa'yo yung mandate. Okay? We have to do this. So, sometimes nagiging autocratic tayo. Wala namang problema doon. Basta, as a leader, you should know what strategy, what kind of leadership style you will use to fit in to that kind of situation. Because not all the time magiging democratic tayo. Sometimes we have to become lazy or fair. Sometimes we have to be um, autocratic. So, mamaya mapapag-uusapan natin yun. So, makikita nyo dyan, class, that these are the factors in leadership. Sometimes, nagkakaproblema sa situation. Sometimes, sa communication. Minsan naman sa follower. At mas malala, pag sa leader na nanggaling yung conflict. So, that is why uh, it should be, you know, synchronous. It should be a collaborative movement. Okay? Sa, sa group, kailangan it should really be a collaborative way Meaning that you really help each other to achieve your goal. Okay? Now, what are the characteristics of leadership? Empathy, consistency, direction, communication, need support from all, assumed obligation. So, those things, class, kailangan, kapag meron kang mga ganit, maybe not all of this, no, ay meron ka. But at some point, kailangan, as a leader, if you want to be a leader, dapat, ito yung mga mabuild natin. Ito yung mapolish natin sa sarili natin. To have an empathic attitude to our subordinates. Like, kung hindi niya kaya ang task, you should put yourself on the situation of that person. Bakit hindi niya nagagawa? What are the things that I could do to help him? Okay? So, kailangan maging empathic tayo. Consistency. Consistency on, on the words that we say, on the... Um, rules and regulation na, na sinusunod natin and everything. So, talagang napakahalaga na ang isang tao ay talagang um, true siya sa kanyang mga sinasabi. Okay? At syempre, nakikita yun sa gawa class. Direction. You should have a 
right direction on how to do the task. Okay? Communication, yun nga, importante yun. In all aspects, talagang communication talaga is one of the best key to have a successful team. And need support from all. You should help each other. Okay? Hindi yung, I will do this para next time ako naman yung mapropromote. I mean, we all wanted to have a higher position, maybe. But the best thing to is really if you help each other, if you help one another to achieve certain goal, kahit na hindi ka ma-promote, basta makita mo yun lang the quality that you did, that both, that all of you did, it's really worth it, no? Sana maging ganun yung ating perspective. And as a leader, of course, we have to really assume obligations. Kahit ano mangyari dyan sa, sa task na yan, whether it could be successful or maybe not, kailangan yung obligations, ina-assume natin. Yung pagkakamali, kailangan natututunan din natin yun. Hindi, we should do, we should not blame others of, of failing. But rather, pag mag-fail man, kailangan ina-accept mo yun. That there is a need to adjust, there is a need to learn from it. That is being a leader. Okay? So, mamaya, I, um, continuation with this topic, it's all about the different leadership style. Baka isa ka na sa Baka ito yung style mo. Okay? So, alamin natin yan. Okay, so continuing our discussion still on leadership. Now, let us talk about the styles of leadership. Ano nga ba yung mga iba't ibang styles in leadership? Okay? First is this, I will just discuss to you based on the authority routine. Okay? Because there's a lot of different styles in leadership. Okay, so ito lang yung mga basic na i-discuss ko. The authoritarian, democratic, and free reign or laser fair na sinasabi. Okay, so first is that autocratic. When we talk about autocratic from the word itself, um, the autocracy meaning it's more on dictating. Okay? Pag sinabi na natin, autocratic, yan yung example natin dyan, do this. Sila yung mas nagmamando. Actually, sila talaga yung mga nagmamando. Oh, you do that, you do this, blah, 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 etc. So, yun. Yun yung style nila. Okay? Pag lace, uh, lace fair naman, okay, do this or that as you fit. Okay? Do this or that as you see fit. Um, me, this is what we call parang free enterprise. Meaning, you do what you want to do. You do the strategy that you want. It's up to you. Bahala ka na dyan. So, ganun yung style ng laser fair. Then, the democratic naman, what do you think we should do? So, it is a, uh, more on uh, knowing the side of the your subordinates. Like, what should we do? Do you think this is fit? Blah, blah, blah. So, more on this, discussing things with your subordinate. So, dalawa kayong involved dyan. Pag laser fair naman, ikaw lang. Okay, bahala ka dyan. Strategy mo yan. Okay? Pag autocratic naman, talagang kung ano lang sabihin ni leader, yun lang yun. Okay? So, yun. Para mas madali natin siyang maintindihan. Okay, now, let's go deeper. What is autocratic leadership? Under autocratic leadership style, all decision-making po power are centralized in the leader. So, meaning, ito na nga yung sinasabi ko, class. Like, ito parang, dic this is what we call dic uh, dictatorship style. Dictatorial to. Kasi, most of, actually not most, but all. All of the decisions are coming from a leaders. Or, uh, from the leaders. Okay? Kung marami sila dyan. So, kung ano yung sabihin nila, yun lang yung gagawin mo. Okay? Walang dagdag, walang kulang. That's it. Okay? They do not entertain any suggestions. Okay? Or initiative from subordinates. The autocratic management has been successful as it provides strong motivation to the managers. If you have your fellow managers, that is, uh, it could lead to a strong motivation nga naman talaga. Kasi, most of your decisions ay coming from you, managers. Kayo-kayo. Tapos, iuutos nyo lang. So, at some point, ang nakakapagbigay ng motivation ay sa kapwa mo, leader. Ganun yun. 
It permits quick decision making as only one person decides the whole group and keeps each decision to himself until he feels it is needed to be shared with the rest of the group. So meaning, um, advantage din ang pagiging autocratic because um, there is a quick decision. Like, hindi mo na kailangan tanungin pa yung subordinates mo on what to do on certain things because you know already what to do. Ikaw na mismo sa'yo manggagaling ang decisions, whatever it is. Hindi mo na kailangan antayin pa sila. Okay? All you need to do is to really approach them and do this. Do this task. Okay, this is my decision. That is final. Do that. So, ganun lang, class. Okay? So, here is, it, here is the advantage and disadvantage of being an autocratic leader. Okay? So, first is that the advantage is provide for quick decision. So, lalo na pag mga kailangan, quick decisions, especially sa, sa isang organization kailangan. So, advantage din ang pagiging autocratic. Okay? Subordinates like to work under centralized authority. So, if it is centralized and nothing uh, nothing problem happens, so at some point, it is effective. It could be really effective talaga, being an autocratic. Confidential matters can be kept secretly. Why? Because talagang Halimbawa, sa tingin mo nagkakaroon ng uh, problem, big problem ng company and you don't want the so your subordinates to know that if you have this kind of leadership, so hindi na nila malalaman yun. It's just between you and other people na uh, kaparehas mo ng position, something like that. Okay? Less competent subordinates are required. Wala masyadong competition within the, uh, uh, with your subordinates kasi Everything it's all about you. It's all about your your decision. So tagagawa lang sila ng mga sinasabi mo sa kanila. Okay? So yun din ang kinaganda kahit pa paano. Parang maron utos ka. Oh, you do that. Oh, ikaw ito dapat gawin. Blah blah blah. Channel R. So sila, okay, I will just do my best. So yun lang yung gagawin ng subordinates. Now, what are the disadvantages naman of being an autocratic? Subordinates are not informed about why they are asked to do a particular work. Okay, so yun lang yung problem. Kasi kapag nag ka, if you are just a subordinate, you just do the task. Regardless kung para saan to or whatever. You just need to do because your leader told you to do so. So yun. Wala kang freedom to ask what to do and everything. Anong strategy or style ang kailangan mong gawin sa certain things. So, yun. Subordinates are forced to follow the direction. Meaning, kung ano yung sinabi, yun yung gawin mo. Yun nga, wala kang freedom to do your, you know, stuff. Kasi nga, what you need to do, yun lang. Okay? Depende, uh, depends entirely upon the efficiency of the leader. So, talagang nakadepende. Kung baga, e e ito yung subordinates, ito yung leader mo. Talagang total dependent ka talaga sa leader mo. Doon ka lang umaasa talaga. Creative ideas are not utilized. You cannot share your ideas because all of the decisions are coming from your leader. So, yun. Yun yung pangit doon. Okay? Organizational continuity is threatened. So, bakit? Kasi nga, most likely, pag puro lang sa leader mo nang gagaling yung do this, do that, blah, 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 and everything. So, as much as possible, hindi siya ganun talaga nagiging um, you, the organization, the stability of the organization ay hindi ganun katatak. Kasi nga, talagang utos ka lang ng utos. You don't allow the, them to share ideas coming from their own things. So, yun, yun yung pangit naman. Kaya nga, if you observe, no, especially yung mga communists, countries na nag gumagawa or nagpapatakbo ng ganitong klasing leadership. So, walang ganong freedom yung kanilang mga nasasakupan to do their own. Talagang everything is fixed. Okay, example na natin dyan class, yung North Korea. Like, they um, fix sa kanila kung ano lang yung dapat mong ituro sa grade level na to. Okay, kailangan it's more on praising the the leaders so um ito lang yung dapat matutunan um hindi ka pwede basta-basta gumamit ng internet na lang doon or whatever and dami ang daming policies na kailangan mong sunduin at 
kapag sinubukan mong pumunta sa North Korea, I saw some videos na mga nag-travel sa North Korea. Talagang with great restrictions. Hindi ka basta-basta pwedeng mag-share doon ng beliefs mo. Okay, kasi baka pwede kang makulong. You can't say anything about your leader, especially negative things. no So, yun yung mahirap doon. Okay? So, that's is why um, not all the time ay magiging effective ang pagiging autocratic leadership. Okay, so moving forward with another type or another style of leadership is what we call the democratic leadership. Dito naman, it's more on console, cons, consultative and persuasive. First is consultative process of consultation before decision are taken. So dito, um, ito yung most likely nakikita natin. Sa, especially dito sa atin sa Philip, Philippines. Philippines is a democratic country. So, um, hindi lang basta-basta nanggagaling yung decision sa isang tao, but talagang pinag-uusapan. Trying to consult it before the decision is being made. Okay? So, yun naman yung maganda doon. Kasi, you get ideas from other people. Okay? We have, kaya nga, sa Congress, we have different sectors, no? Kaya nga, may, yun yung goal din ng mga, role din ng mga party list natin. Because, different sectors, different point of view, different things, no? That they could share. Okay? mas naririnig ang boses kapag may mga representatives. So, yun. So, nagiging more on, nagiging consultative siya. And, syempre, persuasive din naman. Why? Because leaders take decision and seek to persuade others that the decision is correct. So, if you are a democratic leadership and you wanted to really, syempre, you discuss things, no? Kailangan, you have this persuasive skills or you learn how to really persuade them na, okay, since iba't iba yung ideas, yun yung ano din eh, mahirap sa democratic because there are different ideas okay, most likely, baka minsan hindi pa magtugma yung mga ideas paano ka mag-come up with the decision? so kailangan, magiging persuasive ka na I think this is the best decision that we should make why? because blah blah blah, ganito ganyan so ipapakita mo sa kanila yung mga advantages ng decision na yun, bakit yun yung kailangan nating sundin, okay? so yun So, now, what are the advantages and disadvantages? So, first is, advantages is it fits almost every business. So, yun nga, sabi ko nga sa inyo kanina, na talagang makikita natin to in different businesses. Ito yung ginagawa nila. More on collaborative movement. Okay? So, it often has a solution for a complex problems. So, ang, ang, ano lang dito kasi marami kayong, um, res, kumbaga, it is a shared responsibilities in making decisions. Okay? Lalo na sa mga may hirap na decisions, hindi lang ikaw ang pwedeng sisiyan. Kumbaga, marami kayo because you decide it as a group. Okay? So, yun. It promotes creative environment. Okay? Mas nagiging creative siya in a way na nabibigyan ka ng bosses to share your ideas, to do the strategy, okay? To really talk about the strategy. So, yun, nagiging creative tayo. And it builds strong team. Lalo na pag alam mong nabibigyan ng bosses itong ita isang taong to. So, most likely, class, so, nagkakaroon siya ng um, connection really with the team. Kasi nga, nag-uusap sila, they, they consult each other, they persuade each other what are the best and suited na gawin. Okay, so yun yung kinaganda ng democratic. And also, syempre, hindi mawawala yung disadvantages. It tends to become apologetic. Why? Kasi, syempre, since um, hindi ka magsusorry, bakit? Eh, decision natin to pare-parehas eh. Right? We talk about this. So, sometimes we try to excuse ourselves from this. Parang, okay, this is a team problem. Uh, this is a team failure. So, hindi lang basta. Because it is a shared responsibilities in decision making. So, kaya it tends to be apologetic. And it is time consuming. Yeah, kasi nga, since different ideas, different opinions, so talaga mas maraming di discussions or discourse na nangyayari along the organization before you come up with the decision. So, time consuming siya. Unlike sa autocratic, isang decision lang, okay, ito yung gawin mo. And yun na yun. 
Pero dito kasi, kailangan pag-usapan pa ng madlang people ng marami, especially yung mga involved doon sa task na yun. So, yun. Kaya, sometimes, it is time-consuming. It takes a long process of decision. Yeah, kasi maraming maa-apektuhan. Kaya nga dito sa atin, sa Philippines, since we are very democratic talaga naman, um, minsan pag ginawa ng legislative to, umaalma yung executive. Minsan naman, may problem sa judiciary. So, yun. Uh, that's why nagkakaroon ng long-term process and decision. Especially kapag national um, aspect na or na um, national problem na yung pinag-uusapan. So, hindi basta-basta. Maraming sangay ng gobyerno or sectors ang kailangan involved. Not just the government, but even the private sectors. So, yun yung mahirap doon. And it can seems to be uncertain. It is uncertain. Why? Kasi nga, since different ideas, opinions, and everything. So, hindi tayo nagiging stake or stable doon sa bagay na ginagawa natin. Kasi nga, many ideas are coming from different person. So, yun. Okay? So, whatever it is, still, maganda pa rin naman ang democratic. Okay, then we have laser fair leadership. Okay. So, this is a free reign leaders does not lead. Yun lang. How can it be a leadership when he does not lead? Okay, alamin natin yan. Okay, but leaves the group entirely to itself. Such a leader allow maximum freedom to subordinates. They are given a free hand in signing their own policies and methods. At some point, parang ang ganda niya, Oh, I have the freedom to do my own strategy. So, kung ikaw ay isang, ang st style mo is, yeah, you do your task. It's more on being allowing the person to become totally independent. Parang wala kang control with your subordinates. Allowing them to do their own things. Maganda din naman ito, but hindi sa lahat ng bagay, class. ba? So, what if the task is really a group task? Talagang kailangan nyo ng collaborative, po, collaborative movement. Pero kung talagang individual naman ang task, siguro possible, maganda din naman ito. Now, let us find out what are the benefits of laser fair leadership. When team members have the skills to succeed. Meaning, um, the members of the group has his, have their own style to succeed based on their um, point of view, based on their style, whatever they wanted to do, blah, blah, blah. So, yun, nagkakaroon talaga ng total freedom doon sa mga members. When group members are expert, maganda to, pag lahat kayo expert, for example, lahat kayo ay manager. Hindi mo na kailangang sabihan pa si manager A na, oh, ito yung dapat mong gawin. Oh, ikaw manager B, ito dapat. No, because you know that they are expert with that field, so rest assured ka na, oh, they can do it. They can manage it. They can, you know, nail it. Something like that. When independence is valued, pag uh, maganda to kapag yun nga, mga expert yung mga naan doon sa field talaga na yun, then mafe-feel mo na meron ka talagang capacity to really do this on your own. Okay? So, yun. The downside naman of laser affair is the lack of role awareness. Kasi, since kayo ay kanya-kanya, so you don't really know, you have a, uh, not, uh, you have, you don't have a concrete role a certain role talaga doon sa overall task kasi nga kanya-kanya kayo. Poor involvement with the group. So, less communication kasi bakit? Kanya-kanya nga eh. Kanya-kanya style. So, um, medyo, yeah, less involvement talaga doon sa, sa mga tao. Okay? So, maganda nga siya, class, kung talagang yung uh, yung work is as an individual talaga. Hindi kailangan ng group Okay, so yun. Low accountability. Kumbaga, if that fail, ikaw lang yung sisisin because you do your own thing. Maybe your strategy is not appropriate in the situation, so kaya ka nag-fail. So, ang may accountability lang nun ay yung taong gumawa nun mismo. Hindi mo pwedeng isisi sa leader mo because you have your own style nga. So, yun. Passivity and avoidance. So, nagiging passive ka. If you are a leader, then Binigyan mo ng total freedom yung subordinates mo to do his task. So, 
kumbaga ikaw, you try to uh, avoid things that if something fail, hindi ka kasali doon. And um, kapag subordinate ka naman, sometimes nagiging passive ka, ah, ito, eh sabi niya, ako daw bahala eh, so I'll just do this. Ito, ito yung alam kong gawin eh, so ito lang yung kaya ko. So nagiging passive tayo. And sometimes avoidance na rin sa mga bagay-bagay. So, yun. So, may mga downsides sila. So, every type of leadership class, makikita natin that there are advantages and disadvantages. But, the most important thing is that we should really know well ano yung tamang strategy na gawin natin sa situation. Kailangan, kaya nga importante that a leader is at some point really realistic. Kasi, you should know what style of leadership ang kailangan mong gawin sa mga tao mo. Ano ang effective dito? But, kailangan idealistic ka rin. Kasi dapat, um, you have this kind of vision to really pursue more on the things. To really achieve more. Like, to advance yourself. No? Maging uh, realistic ka, but nagiging idealistic ka sa mga future goals na gusto mo pang mangyari sa iyong company. So, yun. You should learn. Wag mo, kapag gusto mong ma-develop ang leadership style, leadership uh, skills mo talaga, wag ka lang mag-base sa isang, ano, sa isang style ng leadership. Actually, maganda nga pag halu-haluin mo to. May mga times na pwede mong maging laser fair ka sa iyong subordinate. Like, depende sa sa task na kailangan gawin. May mga times na kailangan mong maging autocratic, especially kapag alam mong kailangan itong policy na to or guidelines na to sa isang company. So, kailangan maging tough ka doon, maging autocratic ka sa part na yun. May mga times naman na kailangan talagang consul um, meron tayong consultation with other subordinates and even out with our fellow managers. So, yun. Yung magandang paghalu-halu into class. Basta dapat... Tandaan natin that um, like what I said earlier that being a leader is really a choice. Choice mo yon kung talagang gugustuhin mo and be a great influencer. Okay? So, I'm gonna share to you a video no, another video na siguro mas makakapagbigay pa sa atin ng motivation to really understand what is being a leader. Because someday, ay magiging uh, managers na kayo, or you will, since nasa tourism industry kayo, so, importante talaga that um, you have this skills to really, not just lead, but be an influencer, a positive influencer sa ibang tao. So, sana makatulong itong video na ito sa inyo. And that is all for today. So, thank you very much for listening and I hope I may natutunan kayo even though this is just a, a short discussion lang. And, abangan nyo po ang part 2 of our discussion. It's all about group dynamics and the, um, team building naman. Ayan. Uh, thank you and God bless. Leadership is not a rank. Leadership is not a position. Leadership is a decision. Leadership is a choice. It has nothing to do with your position in the organization. If you decide to look after the person to the left of you and look after the person to the right of you, you have become a leader. Sometimes you're the problem. We've seen this happen all too recently with our new men of science and empirical uh, studiers and these men of finance who are smarter than the rest of us until the thing collapsed and they blamed everything else except themselves and my point is is take accountability for your actions you can take all the credit in the world for the things that you do right as long as you also take responsibility for the things you do wrong it must be a balanced equation you don't get it one way and not the other you get to take credit when you also take accountability. You want to be an elite warrior. It's not about how tough you are. It's not about how smart you are. It's not about how fast you are. If you want to be an elite warrior, you better get really, really good at helping the person to the left of you and helping the person to the right of you. Because that's how people advance in the world.
The world is too dangerous and the world is too difficult for you to think that you can do these things alone. If you find your spark, I commend you. Now, who are you going to ask for help and when are you going to accept help when it's offered? Learn that skill. Learn by practicing helping each other. It'll be the single most valuable thing you ever learn in your entire life to accept help when it's offered and to ask for it when you know that you can't do it. The amazing thing is when you learn to ask for help, you'll discover that there are people all around you who've always wanted to help you. They just didn't think you needed it because you kept pretending that you had everything under control. And the minute you say, I don't know what I'm doing, I'm stuck, I'm scared, I don't think I can do this, you will find that lots of people who love you will rush in and take care of you. But that'll only happen if you learn to take care of them first. You will be told your whole life that you need to learn to listen. I would say that you need to learn to be the last to speak. I see it in boardrooms every day of the week. Even people who consider themselves good leaders, who may actually be decent leaders, will walk into a room and say, here's the problem, here's what I think, but I'm interested in your opinion, let's go around the room. It's too late. The skill to hold your opinions to yourself until everyone has spoken does two things. One, it gives everybody else the feeling that they have been heard. It gives everyone else the ability to feel that they have contributed. And two, you get the benefit of hearing what everybody else has to think before you render your opinion. The skill is really to keep your opinions to yourself. If you agree with somebody, don't nod yes. If you disagree with somebody, don't nod no. Simply sit there, take it all in, and the only thing you're allowed to do is ask questions so that you can understand what they mean and why they have the opinion that they have. You must understand from where they are speaking, why they have the opinion they have, not just what they are saying. And at the end, you will get your turn. It sounds easy, it's not. Practice being the last to speak. That's what Nelson Mandela did. Remember this. As you gain fame, as you gain fortune, as you gain position and seniority, people will treat you better. They will hold doors open for you. They will get you a cup of tea and coffee without you even asking. They will call you sir and ma'am and they will give you stuff. None of that stuff is meant for you. That stuff is meant for the position you hold. It is meant for the level that you have achieved of leader or success or whatever you want to call it. But you will always deserve a styrofoam cup. Remember that. Remember that lesson of humility and gratitude. You can accept all the free stuff. You can accept all the perks. Absolutely you can enjoy them. But just be grateful for them and know that they're not for you. I remember getting off the Acela. I took the Acela from New York to Washington DC and I got off the train like everybody else and I was walking down the platform like everyone else and I walked past General Norty Schwartz who used to be the Chief of Staff of the United States Air Force, the head of the Air Force and here I did you see a guy in a suit schlepping his own suitcase down the platform just like me. And just a couple months ago, he was flying on private jets and he had an entourage and other people carried his luggage. But he no longer held the position. And so now he got to drag his own suitcase. And never did it sort of remind me more that none of us deserve the perks that we get. We all deserve a styrofoam cup. Leaders only have one thing, they have followers. A follower is somebody who raises their hand and volunteers to go where you're going. They raise their hand and volunteer to go in the direction that you're pointing. Um, and so to lead others means that you have a clear, a clear vision of a world that does not yet exist, a world that could exist. And by articulating that cause, that vision, that purpose over and over and over again, it inspires people who believe what you believe, who want to see that world built, to join, to, to, to go with you, to figure out ways. You know? And so for me, in my work, what leadership means is articulating this world in which the vast majority of, uh, the vast majority of us wake up every single day inspire to go to work, and come home every single day fulfilled by the work that we do. That doesn't mean we have to like every day, you know, but we can love every day. You don't like your children every day, but you, could, you, but you love your children every day, right? And so the more I talk about this world that does not yet exist yet, because right now the world we live in, the vast majority of people, 90% plus, don't love what they do. They may like it, but they don't love it. 
Um, when I talk about this world, it inspires others who believe what I believe and want to see this world built, join up and figure out in their own way how to advance that vision so it becomes real. I despise the fact, I lament the fact, I curse the fact that so few people get to say, I love my job, as if they've won some lottery. You know, you go out with your friends and somebody says, I love my job, and everybody goes, oh my God, you're so lucky. That to me is madness. Everybody, the vast majority, should get to wake up and say, I love my job. It is a right, it is a God-given right that we should love where we work, and we should demand it. We should demand that our leaders provide an environment in which we want to come, where we want to care about, we, about each other, where we feel safe to express our vulnerabilities and our fears and our concerns, that we're open to correction and discipline and feedback, that we're not defensive because we know that it's being given to help us improve and grow, and we want to improve and grow. Um, and in turn, we will help others improve and grow. Because when we feel safe, when we feel that our leaders care more about us than a number, they care more about our lives and our confidence and our joy and our skill set more than some short-term gain, that they care more about our priorities than the priorities of some disinterested external constituency, then we will respond in kind and we will offer our blood and our sweat and our tears and we will make sacrifices of all kinds to see that our leader's vision is advanced and that this company continues to thrive, not for them, for ourselves. It becomes deeply personal. It becomes something we love contributing to. I talk about it all the time. Working hard for something we don't care about is called stress. Working hard for something we love is called passion. And I'm tired of listening to CEOs saying, we only hire passionate people. What, you don't even know what that means. How do you know that they're passionate for interviewing and not passionate for working? You know, every person on the planet has passion, right? We just don't all have passion for the same things. Give me something to believe in. Give me something to believe in. Give me the opportunity to contribute to something. Allow me to make mistakes and try again. And you'll have passion up the wazoo.